It took me nearly two months, but I finally got through all three seasons of Avatar The Last Airbender. I had already put together three other videos about my thoughts on the previous seasons, and everything I had seen had made me really want to see how it would all come to an end. I really enjoyed watching all these characters go through their journeys, learning wisdom from their experiences, and even having to make some really hard choices. Sokka still brought a great deal of humor to the show, but also played his part by becoming an impressive strategist. It's really nice to see that throughout the entire show, the writers were actually building towards something and not keeping him as just the comic relief. Katara has also shown a lot of growth. I can tell that she had become much more mature and understanding from how she had been depicted in earlier seasons. Toph is also quite enjoyable to have around. Though she wasn't part of the main cast from the beginning, she really managed to stand out from the others in her own ways. It's still inspiring to see how she had turned her handicap into her greatest strength. I was also thoroughly impressed with Prince Zuko's journey throughout the series. I had been interested in how he would progress since I saw his origin story back in the first season. And honestly, his story arc did not disappoint. He made many good and bad decisions along the way, and I like that his choices were not always so clear-cut. He learned to make his own destiny, and I'm glad to see that his journey was very worthwhile. On the flip side, it was also interesting to see Princess Azula's journey and the choices that she made to get there. She too had become obsessed with her goals in life and sought for power through fear and intimidation. And while the writers could have just kept her as a foil for the heroes to defeat, I was actually impressed with how her story wrapped up in the end. The choices she made slowly but surely isolated her from those who had been by her side for many years. One by one, she drove away her servants, her agents, and even her closest friends until she had become completely alone. And even then, she was still trying to convince herself that it would all be worthwhile, which made for a very interesting character that is also highly dangerous, a rather potent combination. I've mentioned before that Iroh gives us quite an enjoyable performance. Throughout Season 1 and 2, he was quite effective at being comic relief as well as being a wise sage for Zuko. However, in Season 3, he plays a much smaller role. In fact, we don't see him at all for most of the episodes. I was impressed by the few scenes he did take part in, though, particularly when he managed to keep his wits about him despite being imprisoned for who knows how long. But I really missed having him around, since he had so much more screen time during the first two seasons. I suppose I can understand the fact that Zuko had to be able to forge his own destiny even after making mistakes, and having Iroh there to talk him through every step would have diminished the effect of Zuko's journey. I still wish that Iroh had played more of a role in the final episodes, though. And then we come to the Avatar himself, Aang. It was really intriguing watching him make decisions as the world becomes all the more dangerous with each passing day. And while everyone is trying to tell him to follow a certain destiny, he still has to struggle within himself as to what will be the right thing to do. I really like seeing him get separated from the group and talking with the spirits of the previous avatars, because it really shows just how difficult his decision is. And it was also nice that early on in the season, Aang actually took the time to take part in some of the Fire Nation culture. The writers actually show us that the Fire Nation people are not like their leaders, and that adds a very human element to a story of war. And everything was slowly building up to a climactic finale, so I was getting all the more intrigued with each new episode that I watched. And when I finally came to the end, it was pretty good. There were some fantastic fight sequences. Both the heroes and the villains had some great moments in the spotlight, and a lot of things were being wrapped up all at once. But that kind of made it an issue for me. Not much of an issue, but still an issue. I really enjoyed the fact that they were bringing back all these old characters so it felt more like a nation was fighting for its freedom instead of just the main characters. But at the same time, I don't think they spent quite as much as they should have with the main characters. I was expecting Iroh to have his moment to really shine at the end, but aside from some words of wisdom, he really didn't stand out as much as I was hoping he would. I really liked seeing Azula sinking deeper into despair and madness, but after she was defeated, we don't see anything about her afterwards. She was lashing out with screams and tears, but nothing beyond that. And then we have the fight between Aang and the Fire Lord. It was very impressive and certainly kept me glued to the screen the whole time, but I was honestly hoping that Aang would have gotten through this fight without the Avatar state, as he becomes too powerful to make the conflict interesting. 
I realized that the writers were trying to give him a moment where he could have killed the Fire Lord and then deciding not to go through with it. And given the build-up towards this episode, I pretty much knew that was going to happen. But when he manages to take away the Fire Lord's ability to firebend, it really comes out of nowhere. I had been hoping that he would find a way to imprison the Fire Lord, and that does actually happen, but this scene really feels off to me. But I suppose I shouldn't be judging this series on what I want it to be, and judge it on what it actually is. And for what it is, this series was a really fun ride. I wanted to see each new episode and discover where these characters were going. I honestly wish that they had spent more time at the end wrapping everything up, because it feels like the epilogue was just too short to give all these characters enough time to speak their piece. The relationship between Aang and Katara really should have had more to it in this final scene. There was an earlier episode where they actually have to talk about their feelings for each other, and again, it adds a very human element to these characters. But at the end, there is no conversation about their relationship, they're just together. But this is not to say that Avatar was not enjoyable to watch. I really had a lot of fun with this series. I think that perhaps they were building up a little too much towards the final episodes, and when they finally got to the end, there just wasn't quite enough to meet my expectations. But it did come close, as I think that most everything wrapped up rather well here. I wish that I could have seen more, but perhaps that's a good thing, seeing a series that is this good and wanting to see more from it. I realize that there is a follow-up series that takes place many years later, but I honestly don't know anything about it yet. I know that some of the other analysts on YouTube have been doing reviews of that show, but I haven't watched any of them. I wanted to go into Avatar without knowing what would happen ahead of time, and one of these days I may get into Legend of Korra as well. But for now, I am glad that I saw Avatar. I don't think there is quite as much of an incentive to watch the episodes again, like there is with so many of the My Little Pony episodes, but for what it was, I really enjoyed the journey. For those of you who have seen Avatar, I am curious to hear what your thoughts are on the final season. I know that I've talked quite a bit about the final episodes in particular, and I'd like to know what you think about these topics that I've brought up. I'd also like to thank ANY Pony in particular, since he was the one who got me into watching this series in the first place. He said that he wanted to make another fan of the show, and he certainly got one. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. As for now, the next season of MLP is finally upon us, and I'll be spending the bulk of my time going through the show that first got me into YouTube analysis. Until next time, I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.